Hello, welcome to the Basketball Soapbox. I'm your host, Daniel Daly, here on YouTube and Spotify. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you want to support the channel, like, comment, and subscribe, it will be greatly appreciated. Um, welcome to episode 57 here, where we're going to be talking about, of course, Jalen Brown's contract extension. Uh, it's been a real long summer. Um, everybody's been waiting for this to be uh, 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 finished. Uh, Signed, sealed, delivered, all that type of stuff, waiting for that to happen, especially with all the Celtics moves, um, the Damian Lillard uh, trade potential that was there. Um, everyone was kind of sitting on needles waiting for this to get done. Um, people were becoming pessimistic about it. All the other things that I'll get into in, in a moment, but let's start off with Jalen Brown signing for five years, $304 million with the Boston Celtics. Uh, there are no, no trade clauses because he wasn't eligible for that. Um, there were no uh, player or team options. So this is fully guaranteed $304 million to be here with the Boston Celtics, at least for the next couple of years. Um, monumental contract signing uh, Jalen Brown doing this, of course, with at MIT in Cambridge with his bridge program where he helps inner center youth uh, get exposure to a little bit more of the uh, technical side of things with robotics and engineering and stuff like that of that nature at MIT, a partnership that he has with his bridge program. Um, he signed the deal on Tuesday, July 25th. Uh, very monumental there. They're having uh, John Carlos, who is also a, a civil rights legend, uh, 1968 um, protest that he did there with the Black Power Fist, um, bare feet, basically talking about the poverty for Black America, in, Black Americans in um in America at that time and just all the little things that he, well, not the little things with the major contributions that he has contributed to the civil rights movement. Um, John Carlos, you can look him up, find out all the stuff about him. Um, track legend, hall of famer of the Olympics and, and things of that nature and really helped the civil rights movement of course of the Olympics at that point in time um, was at the press conference to introduce Jalen Brown there uh, for the signing. And it was awesome to see that. Um, Brown people of that type of magnitude on stage with the Jalen Brown civil rights legend next to him. Um, his mom was there, his family was there. So that was awesome to see Jalen Brown in that perspective and be around that. Um, he also touched based on that press conference about wanting to make a change in Boston about the wealth uh, inequality gap that's there between inner city and the, the wealthy of Boston and just helping the inner city use with education and funding and all the things of that nature and just all the things that you think Jalen Brown does in terms of charity works for neighborhoods in Boston and not just outside of Boston and the occasional food drive or anything like that, actually going to neighborhoods, talking to kids and stuff like that, actually trying to be a part ingratiated into the culture, the neighborhoods of Boston, and especially towards people of color, black people, um, especially in Boston where everything's getting gentrified, everything's getting expensive. There's, it's cool to see an athlete take a step up and say, hey, I'm a part of this. I'm here with you guys, and we're trying to find the answers for you guys. That is not just gentrification, that you have to get up and leave, that things are endless, that it's just crime and, and ready to end the city of Boston. So to see that from that standpoint, to see Jalen Brown care that much, step into these neighborhoods and not be afraid and often and frequently, that's important for the city of Boston. So that's definitely awesome to see. Um and it was just dope. And he also said he wants to bring back Black uh, Wall Street, which is just awesome to see that he wants to have black businesses in Boston, not just be pushed out and not just be uh, uh, secluded and, and, and blacklisted um, to see there get to get that education about business and knowledge about money. I feel like that's a lot of the stuff, especially even with his bridge program where he's getting people into robotics and engineering and stuff like that. A lot of those tools and systems got taken out of the city, especially for uh, inner city youth, black kids, people, Spanish kids and stuff like that. Kids that are in the, in the city. A lot of those things where you're skill based, learning about that type of knowledge that can excel in, let's be honest, pay as well, have been stripped from the hood like been stripped from the neighborhoods in Boston and stuff like that. So to see Jalen Brown actually pinpoint that and talk about that on a various big level like that and make the rounds on media, social media and stuff like that, that's important. That's awesome to see. And it's just good to see a, a black athlete now in this position with all this money to sit there and be like, hey, I'm going to try to use this and try to figure out how I can actually be a part of the answers, the solutions, be a little bit of help here. And just the step forward of that and the introduction of that, that's awesome to see, of course. Um, but let's get into the details of the contract here. Five years, $304 million. Um, 
people have been pessimistic. That's what I'm going to say. Pessimistic about it, about Jalen Brown making this type of money. And it's just the nature of the business when you serve your contract and especially staying with a team for a multitude of years like that, you're going to be rewarded and you get a percentage of the cap that's allotted to you. Jalen Brown has been with the Celtics for what, seven years, eight years now? Let's see here. I have it in the background here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven years. So he's entering his eighth year in the league right now, um, coming up this upcoming season. It has really just improved every year. He had 26.6 points per game last season, nearly seven rebounds, three and a half assists on 49% shooting um, from the field. So every year, Jalen Brown has taken a step forward and has been an all star. He was all NBA last past year. So all these people coming around and saying he's not worth that type of money. You don't get to negotiate that. That's never worked in the league. That's just the way things are. If you stayed with your team for a certain amount of years and you excel that certain and you hit these benchmarks, you are now eligible for a certain amount of money. Same thing with the rookie extensions that we've seen with LaMelo Ball, Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton. Those guys just got paid, what, $260 million? And people were sitting there, well, what have they done in the league and all this other stuff? And it's like, you're not doing that. You're paying on the potential that a player could be. And with the Boston Celtics with this contract, where Jalen Brown is at 26 years old, there's at least still five, six years of his growth and development that he can have in his game. Are there areas for improvement? Of course, people make fun of the turnovers and stuff like that. That was exhibited, of course, in the NBA Finals in 2022 and last year in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Miami Heat. Um, those things happen. <laughs> like Magic Johnson in the NBA Finals threw the ball to Robert Parrish straight to him and lost the NBA Finals like that. I believe in 1984. Like these little things happen. Of course, Jalen Brown's not Magic Johnson in the caliber of that, but these things happen where players have to get through these trials and tribulations and get better as a player. Now, do I think there is a ceiling to Jalen Brown that's different from a guy like Jason Tatum who was on his team? Yes. Like Jason Tatum is just naturally more of a better score, has a different feel for the game. Jalen Brown's more athletic, a little bit of a different score, and has become a better scorer overall in his career, um, finishing at the basket better, shooting better, all these little things that have added up. Can the handling get better? Of course. That's what everybody wants in Boston. That's what everybody's trying to complain about. But if you're going to sit there and look around the league, what much better than can you do with Jalen Brown? Like, what is the other alternative there that you're looking for to replace Jalen Brown with? Now, people are saying Damian Lillard, and I'm sitting there like, you guys are complaining about Jalen Brown making $70 million at 31 in 2028-29. Damian Lillard is going to be making $63 million a year a year previously if you would have traded for him. Like, so these little things where people are trying to pit point and, and, and try to nitpick at the details of this contract and how much money it is going to be down the line, it doesn't kick it in until next season. Not this upcoming season, the season after. And people are complaining about this deal and how long it is, how much money it is. And it's like, okay, well, what do you guys think that Jason Tatum's going to be paid? Are you guys going to start complaining when Jason Tatum's getting five years, 350? No. <laughs> Because you believe that he's that type of player, that he can get to that level of player. Okay, cool, whatever. But that's look at the difference between the paycheck between Jalen, Jason Tatum potentially and Jalen Brown. Everything is going to fit perfectly and, for, and figure out fine. Everyone's figuring out like, oh, well, this money takes up too much of the cap. How are the Celtics going to continue to build? If you do not think the Celtics are in a, in a position to compete for a championship, then you just don't believe in the Boston Celtics. This is a team that has been to four conference finals with uh, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown the past couple of years, has gotten to a finals, has been knocking on the door every year to get to that next step and next level. If you take Jalen Brown off this team, you take a step back. Let's just be honest. And you look around, it's like, who are you guys going to get? Damian Lillard? Yes, he would have helped offensively, but defensively, that still would have been a problem there. All these other things that people are saying and trying to suggest and do all these dumb things, I'm like, the smart thing to do is pay Jalen Brown. Regardless of whatever you think that is, what type of player he's going to be, whatever level you think he's going to reach, the smart thing to do is pay Jalen Brown. That's the first thing that you should do. <laughs> and the Celtics secured that and did that. And people were complaining about how long it's going to take and how long this contract was taking to get signed. It's like after there was word that they weren't interested in Damian Lillard, it's like, okay, guys, let's just wait and see what happens here. There's not going to be a sign and trade. There's no really place where you can go. This is the smartest thing that the Celtics can do because Jalen Brown's 26 years old. He's an all NBA player and just scored 26 points next to Jason Tatum. 
Like I'm willing to bet on that <laughs> as a second as a second star for our team. I'm willing to bet on that. I'm fine with that. And getting back to the dynamics of the pay and stuff like that, people keep complaining about how this contract is too much money. It's going to take too much of the cap. Well, in the collective bargaining agreement, the salary cap is going to go up at least, everyone saying projection-wise, at least 10% each year. So if it goes up 10% each year and Jalen Brown's locked into these numbers, doesn't that mean his cap percentage on those numbers gets smaller? Yes, it does. And if the cap continues to go up projected, which they said I think it was around 220 million in what 2020 and 29, it's like he's going to be making 70 million dollars of the cap. That's fine. <laughs> like the Celtics will figure it out. And everyone's acting like this is going to be a crazy, crazy contract and stuff like that. Every other team who has multiple stars on their team is going to be dealing with the same situation. Are there going to be some teams that trade certain stars and get them out of there? Of course they are. Are there going to be some teams that panic? Are there going to be some teams that try to renegotiate and try to figure out how to get bench players on these teams? Absolutely. Are there going to be bench players that take pay cuts to go play with certain teams? Absolutely. And guess what? That happens all the time in the NBA. People take pay cuts to go somewhere else. The, I mentioned it early in the conversation. The Miami Heat Big Three took pay cuts to go play together. Now, that's the biggest thing of this NBA um, CBA to me with this whole new salary cap and stuff like that and the rules that are in place. I'm wondering what players are going to now be the next trio or next duo to take pay cuts to go play together and still build the team around each other. That's going to be an interesting thing. But right now, the Celtics are in prime position to get back to the NBA Finals. And that starts with Jalen Brown, signing Jalen Brown, securing him long term. That was the first move. You got Porzingis next to him. You got Jason Tatum. You got Malcolm Brogdon coming back. You got Derek White. You got Robert Williams. You got an aging Al Horford who can now hopefully move to the bench. So that now puts more responsible on Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to get this shit done. And if you don't believe the Boston Celtics are in a position or at least have a chance to do that, then just say you don't believe in the Boston Celtics. That's the honest and good truth. Like, just don't believe in the Boston Celtics. But Jalen Brown has progressed every year, and he's earned this money. Regardless of whatever everybody thinks that he's going to be overpaid or whatever the case would be, he's not going to live up to the contract. We don't know that. But seeing the progression of Jalen Brown year in, year out, I'm willing to bet on that. I'm willing to bet on that. You look around duos around the league, you got LeBron and AD. You got Paul George and Kawhi. You got Jimmy Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo. You got Kyrie and Luka Doncic. You got uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo and Chris Middleton. And we got Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And we can hang with any of those guys in the league as a duo. They can. They've proven it. They've been to four Eastern Conference Finals, and they got to an NBA Finals. You don't do that by accident. I'm sorry, whatever people are trying to say, whatever flukes or injuries or anything like that, you don't do that by accident. If you're consistently doing that, that means you're a good team, whether people want to believe it or not. That's just the truth of the matter. That's just the truth of the matter. And when people look around this league and, again, complaining about the contract for Jalen Brown, Again, like you look at guys like Jason Tatum, who's going to be um, eligible for a Supermax as well. I believe this upcoming year they could start negotiations. You got guys like Luka Doncic. You got guys like Giannis Antetokounmpo. You got guys like SGA in Oklahoma City. Is Oklahoma City going to break the bank for SGA? That's a big question. But are those guys going to get paid more than Jalen Brown? Absolutely, because that's just the nature of the beast. Is Pascal Siakam going to get paid more? I believe he's trying to get into that 10-year range, I believe, to get the real Supermax where you can get 10 years on your deal and you get a little bit more of the cap there. But guys are going to get paid. <laughs> That's what they should want in the NBA. They should want guys to get paid the most money they can. Sorry, that that's good for the league when guys are getting paid. And also what I want to look at is people keep saying that this extension is going to hurt and how we're going to make moves and stuff like that. The TV deal is up in 25, 26. That's the second year of Jalen Brown's contract. And what do you think that TV deal is going to do with the cap? 
going to do to the revenue in the NBA and going to do for the salaries of the NBA players. It's going to go up. It's going to go up. That is what's going to happen. So all this concern and stuff like that, the NBA is going to make money. The Boston Celtics are going to make money. Jalen Brown's going to make money. Jason Tatum's going to make money. That's the nature of the business. And everybody's worried about NBA players getting paid for even back in the day when you listen to guys talk about uh, contracts. I remember on NBC when Julius Irvin was in the the pregame booth and stuff like that, halftime shows and stuff like that. He was saying these guys are making $15 million. These guys are making too much money. He said that on national TV about guys making $15 million. Guys are now making 30, 40, 50, 60 million dollars a year in the NBA. And I think that was like 2000, 1999, Julius Irvin was complaining about guys making $15 million. So don't sit here and keep complaining about that. Like that's just the nature of the game and it's going to continue to grow. There's going to be a player out there that makes $100 million a year. But without taxes, but on paper, the stamp the stamp sticker, the sticker price number that these guys get paid, somebody's going to be at that $100 million mark, and it's going to be soon. Is it Luka Doncic? Is it Giannis? There's going to be somebody that's going to be pushing for that $100 million goal. That's going to be the new thing now. Would it be the next couple of years? I'll say maybe two or three years. Somebody's going to be pushing for that $100 million goal. So when that happens, are you guys going to be upset? Of course, you guys are going to be upset about that. People are going to complain about that. People are going to sit there and try to act like that's egregious. And I bring it back to Jalen Brown's 28-29 season, which everybody's worried they've been making $70 million. The Boston Celtics are worth $4 billion. $4 billion. Google it. Right now, they're worth $4 billion. If they were up for sale... They will probably be worth seven. So for Jalen Brown to potentially get paid $70 million, shut the hell up. Be okay with it. It's not bad. It's fine for the game. That means if the NBA players are making money, these owners are making money. You have to sign that contract. The owners know how much they're putting in that that bank. And for them to push that contract to Jalen Brown, means they can afford it. (laughs) This isn't back in the day where people were selling contracts to get cash consideration to pay the debts. That's not what happens here. And when the Boston Celtics are a winning team and the owner says, hey, we got to pay, we're going to spend money to win. This is a part of it. This is a part of it. So let's be all be happy for Jalen Brown, first of all. Let's be happy for the city of Boston. Let's be happy for the Boston Celtics. We got our guy. We got our, we got our second star here in Boston, and we got another we got another chance. We just reopened that window to continue to pathway to Banner 18 as a Boston Celtics fan. So let's just remember that, and Jalen Brown potentially is a part of that. And now all these guys got to do is get out, go out there, and get it done. And hopefully that equals up to Jason Tatum getting paid bigger money down the line as well. Hopefully an MVP. Hopefully a Finals MVP. Hopefully a championship. And that's what it all what that's what it's all about. I will do it for this episode. It's a short one here. Um, but yeah, I'm happy that Jalen Brown got paid. Um, I'm gonna be doing the offseason grades hopefully soon. Um, taking some notes and doing to doing the little details on that. Um, that's gonna be coming up, of course. So box summer continuing that uh Bomani Jones uh Bulldog series. I'm taking notes on that as well, continuing that and exploring those teams that Michael Jordan faced, the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan faced during the 90s, during their run, Bomani Jones series, which is awesome. It was made during the pandemic. Of course, check it out. I'm um, going to be continuing to doing that. So NBA offseason, so box summer, more quick hits and stuff like that. Also check out Ring Takes as we continue on the road to SummerSlam, which is next week. Um, we have a couple episodes that went up just now. So please check that out, as well as our SummerSlam picks for next week, which is going to be awesome. Um, so check that out. Got a couple things going on, um, but thanks for joining me on this one. And until next time.